Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to give some quick thoughts on Castle Nathri as far as how good is it as a raid. Um, we've seen a few changes, so I'll mention those, but I will also talk about kind of what state was the raid in when we initially killed it uh, during the first few weeks, versus what I think about it right now. So let's go over the bosses, I'll give some quick feedback. Shriekwing, um, pretty cool introduction boss. There were probably like four versions of this boss on the PTR, so we weren't exactly sure which one was going to end up making it to live. Um, they changed a lot of things about this fight, from how the intermission works to how the lantern mechanic works on Mythic. Um, but ultimately, I think it ended up being a pretty decent fight. It's not overly difficult, but not too easy either. Um, if you're, especially if you're like a, a starting mythic guild who's just looking to get into mythic progression. Then we have Huntsman. Again, Huntsman was kind of changed from PTR or beta testing to live. Um, largely some like minor changes as far as the mechanics go, particularly whenever you got hit by a Sin Seeker. Um, on beta, if you had an immunity up, you wouldn't spawn a spirit whereas on live you do. But other than that, Huntsman is actually a pretty cool fight. Um, some overlap between like CCing mobs and doing uh, insane amounts of damage. On beta, when we initially tested this boss, you could ramp up the, the debuff on the bears, on the shades, pretty much as far as you wanted. And then you could just one-shot them. So obviously that didn't make it into live either. The Huntsman, pretty decent second boss. Again, it's a few pulls um, to kill this boss. Not overly difficult, but not too easy either. I don't have too much to talk about this one. Then we move on to Sun King. So unfortunately, every cycle of beta testing for Sun King, the boss was a joke. Um, when we did mythic testing for this particular encounter, it was as easy, if not easier, than heroic. So it was kind of hard to gauge where this boss was going to fall on on like the difficulty spectrum in the, within the raid um just because of how much of a joke it was but i think that when it came to live and when we got to it the first day um the tuning on this fight was really good um the, your dps needed to be on point to break those shields whenever you were fighting kale the healing was not a pushover at all and adds also they changed the a lot how the ad waves spawned during beta testing you would get the infusers way more often than you do on live uh, with our strategy we got one set of infusers with like some other strategies you can do it without getting any infusers so during testing the ad waves were a lot closer together but the ads weren't as important or as deadly so you got a lot more ads but they also died faster so I think with this, it allows some better strategies uh, in terms of what you want to do with it. Um, overall, Sunking, I think, is the way you do a healer fight that is focused primarily on healers. Um, I'm not sure, you know, as a healer player, how they feel about it. But from a DPS standpoint, it was a pretty decent fight. Then we did a Hungering Destroyer. So Hungering Destroyer, again, we had some issues coming up with a strategy that we wanted to use just because there's so many ways to handle the miasma circles on mythic um, you can either have people assigned and then rotating people or you can group assign at some point i believe we even tried like stacking them and then have like half of the rate stack in to soak then uh, swap out and the other half go and soak but there was just way too much damage so Hungering is definitely like an interesting fight from the point of view that you need like a lot of player responsibility where people um, are like aware of which group they're supposed to soak and then they're aware of how much health the person has so they help them out. Um, or you need someone who min-maxes the calls, right? You either have, you do that by a weak aura or like literally one person, which is what we did, um, call out like one person go soak diamond, second person go soak X, um, and then you just rotate people uh, based on those calls. So Hungering ended up being an, an okay fight. Still probably the last like super early fight of the raid that only takes you a couple pulls. 
Then we move on to Artificer. So Artificer, if I remember correctly, during testing, um, we saw pretty much until the second hard overlap um, in phase two or phase three. Um, this fight, I think a lot of people were looking forward to it just because of how mechanically intense this is. It all comes down to having that like perfect execution. You need to coordinate people uh, carrying the seeds away from the raid, um, dodging the ghosts when they fixate you, you know, dropping the portals, where you drop the portals, how you approach that. Even on this fight, we went over, I think we used a bunch of different strategies. Um, one of our initial strategy was tanking the boss at the entrance, and then seeds would get dropped on the opposite side, so where the boss spawns. Um, but we went through a few different strategies and ended up using the one that you see being used nowadays. Um, Artificer is a great fight if your players are able to do, deal with those hard overlaps. Um, nowadays, it doesn't really matter that much because if you lose a few players here and there, you're just going to limp through the fight and still kill it since it is an earlier boss. But the first day or the first two days, um first reset whatever this fight you kind of needed people to survive those hard overlaps like the very first overlap going into the second phase um then like the first overlap in the third phase and second overlap in the third phase where you know you're getting drawn in by the edge of annihilation you have to carry seeds and you're also getting fixated by ghosts like those are very very difficult ability and mechanic overlaps that happen um, but if you survive those, from there on, you pretty much won the fight. So I'm not exactly sure how I feel about fights like that, where as long as you overcome a very difficult point, from there on, it's a breeze. Um, I prefer fights to have like ramping difficulty. So for example, the first set of ads, as soon as you go into the phase two, the hardest mechanic overlap you, you will get in the entirety of phase two happens at the very beginning um and then after that it's just kind of a breeze through phase two and then you enter phase three and again the hardest or well second hardest ability overlap happens right at the beginning of phase three so overall um i kind of have mixed feelings about this boss i know a lot of people had high expectations for me it's like kind of an average boss um since it is meant to be just that like mechanically intensive fight where dps doesn't really matter you just need to survive then we had Lady Enerva Dark Vein. So on Heroic, when we did the first Heroic testing, we were like, okay, on Mythic, this fight is going to be absolutely insane. There's all these containers. You got to manage when you vent which, which one. And then, you know, Mythic comes around, Mythic testing comes around. And during Mythic testing, we never vented because during testing, you're not meant to kill bosses most of the time. Um, so we never made it to that last point of the fight where you needed those extra like 10 seconds from venting to survive. So mythic te testing, we literally just never touched the containers. Then when it came to live, you vent at two points in the fight. And one of them now is optional since the only real benefit it gets you, it's like nine or eight or nine extra seconds before the boss enrages and kills everyone. So this fight had like incredible com potential for complexity um, in like min-maxing the containers, min-maxing ads, but I think it was kind of trivialized by the mythic specific mechanic and also by the fact that you can pre-immune ads. So if you had a bunch of DKs, warriors, rogue, mages, hunters, um, etc., certain ad waves you were able to just completely negate and you never got an ad wave um, which makes this fight significantly simpler when looking at it that way since if you never get a specific ad wave that happens during a hard mechanic overlap it just trivializes that part of the encounter whereas if you always had to deal with three ads um, for each set this encounter would become a much more difficult in my opinion then we move on to Council. So Council is kind of one of the weirder bosses in the raid in that you get to choose the order you do the bosses in, obviously. Um, 
but the first week this fight was not working as intended and i really do believe that if week one this encounter would have been uh, scripted correctly and working as intended it would have been an extremely difficult fight uh, we would have probably seen guilds put like 150 200 pulls in um just because of how difficult it is to min max the amount of damage you needed to push the phases at correct times on top of the incoming damage so week one you were not getting the mythic mechanic um dancing fever as often as you should have you pretty much got half of the dancing fevers as you do now so that allowed you to have way less reliability on healers um, and pretty much just breeze through each set of Dancing Fever with a bunch of cooldowns. Like you could stack four or five raid wide cooldowns for each Dancing Fever just because they happened so far apart from each other. Um, so this fight, if it would have worked properly, it would have been a really difficult fight. Um, like week two, they fixed it. Um, they changed a bunch of stuff about it. But week one... This fight was difficult just in terms of, okay, you need to get the correct push timings down for each of the phases, and then you need to min-max your DPS for that third phase where you're just fighting one boss, um, and if you did that, you win. So Council was a bit of a di disappointment, um, and obviously we were also unsure of what's going to end up being the version of this encounter that makes it to live. Because during testing, I think Council got tested the most out of any Mythic boss uh, in the raid. The first three iterations of this boss were completely scrapped. The dance mechanic, initially it was like a mini game where your action bar disappears and you get a new one. And then, you know, it's four buttons for forward, backwards, left and right, instead of you actually just controlling your character. Um, and then if you messed it up, you got stunned and put like in a little bench looking at your raid. Um, on the side of the room, which was pretty funny. But this fight, um, every single testing cycle, it was extremely undertuned until the last one. On the last one, it was actually very difficult and much more, um, it was closer to what the live fight actually was. So Council, overall, still a bit of a disappointment and it will live on as a meme of a mythic raid encounter, especially when it comes to testing it. Then we move on to Sludge Fist. So Sludge Fist was... During testing, I think this was one of the more difficult fights that we did. Um, we didn't really have the proper comp for it during testing. We were trying to just, you know, use a balanced melee and range split. Whereas we now know that obviously melee are banned on this fight. So Sludge Fist, I think, is the single best example of a modern patchwork fight that we've seen in a long time. The closest to Sludge Fist is Lady Ashvane in Eternal Palace, but Ashvane was so early on in the raid that I wouldn't consider it a patchwork fight, since any fight that you're able to 3 tank and still make the damage check is, is kind of like out of that patchwork realm. Um, so I believe that like in the past, patchwork fights just were placed too early on in the raid. Um, if you're going to have a patchwork fight, you know, like between the first and fifth slot in the raid, you can't make it so difficult that it's going to be a hard block for most guilds. Um, like we saw with Croesus, for example, in Nighthold, back in Legion. So Croesus was the third boss, fourth boss in the raid. Um, and it was still like a fairly difficult fight, but most guilds, like the top end guilds, either just killed it in a couple of pulls, or you know, like mid end guilds just got hard stuck on it. So Croesus was like okay as a council fight or as a patchwork fight. A sludge fist, I think, is like the prime example of a modern patchwork fight where you need to squeeze every ounce of DPS out. You need to optimize your cooldowns perfectly for those increased damage taken phases. Um, also a very hard healing check. And then, obviously, the way you kill this fight, most guilds, I believe, killed it past Enrage. So that last, last charge, whenever he charges into a wall, from there you have about 5 to 10 seconds to kill the boss past Enrage. And I believe that most guilds that kill this boss, like early on, 
did hit that enrage point. So Sludge Fist, um, absolutely fantastic, phenomenal uh, patchwork fight in my opinion. So then we move on to the, the Black Sheep of Castle Nathria, which is Stone Legion Generals. So if, you're, if you haven't done this fight on Mythic or um, are not going to you know, see how it worked initially, this fight was an absolute disaster. Um, SLG was another one of those encounters that got tested a couple times. I think it got tested about three times. Each time it changed slightly, uh, but we never really got like a definitive version of the fight that seemed to be in a working condition. So SLG is probably one of the worst fights I've done in a long time. Um, Pre-changes, I gotta, I gotta preface that. So pre-changes, when we did it, when Limit did it, Method, um, and everyone else that killed it prior to this month, um, or this last week, or the week before, had to deal with something called spell queuing on this fight. Um, and it wasn't even spell queuing, it was more of a spell priority that the bosses did. Um, let's say there's like eight mechanics on the fight. If they all happened at the exact same time, there was like a set order in which they would happen. Um, and that order would remain every time. And this kind of introduced a lot of issues because the abilities never reset uh, timers. So something that you did in the first two minutes of the encounter would continue affecting you throughout the entire fight. And obviously this was a 12 minute plus encounter. So that was a huge problem. Just to give you an example, in phase one, right at the end of the phase one, right before you push into the intermission, you get an ability combo where you get Wicked Blades and it crystallize. While we were doing this encounter, if you got crystallized before the Wicked Blades, that was a bad pull because the entirety of phase two, you would get more difficult um, ability orders that were a lot more difficult to deal with. Whereas if you got Wicked Blades and then the crystallize, that meant you got the easy order. So phase two, now you could progress and you could potentially kill the boss. So this boss literally got to the point where at the end of the first intermission or at the end of the first phase, you saw those abilities and depending on what order they came out in, you were like, okay, this is a good pull or why are we even continuing to fight this, this, this boss? Like there's literally no point. Um, so ability queuing on this encounter was a big problem. On top of that, you had countless bugs. Um, I made a Twitter post like after the first couple days of progging it. Just with Wicked Blades, there were like eight plus bugs, I think. Um, some of them were actually like game breaking in terms of like if they happened, you just died. Whereas others were just minor and kind of funny. Um, so like one of the major bugs was that whenever Call threw out the Wicked Blades, sometimes instead of catching them when they came back to her, they would just go through the boss and travel like a further five to eight yards and just hit your whole raid and wipe you. Um, obviously very game breaking bug. Um, or like a funny one where if you got Wicked Blades during the wins uh, from the skirmishers, they would just like spin around one person a couple times before moving on to the second target. So some of the bugs with Wicked Blades were game-breaking, others just kind of funny. And then the, this continued on for the entirety of the fight. In the intermission, you had a bug where um, Grishal, instead of helping you out and getting those commandos down, sometimes he just stopped and just didn't do anything. So the commandos are obviously important for Mythic because you need to kill them to dunk orbs, um, because without them you can't get out of the intermission. And sometimes Grishol would just not do anything. And um, on a fight that's, that was this tightly tuned in terms of timings, where you needed to push everything at a specific time, sometimes having you know three commandos down versus other times having five or six made a large difference. And then this sometimes swung the other way as well, where Grishol would almost one-shot a commando because I assume he like crit them, and it would, the commando would come down with like almost no health. Uh, which is, again, an issue because with on the Mythic uh, version of this fight, you want to kill them all at the same time. So if one commando comes down at 10% health, um, it's a lot more difficult to do. Then we move on to stage two. Stage two was fairly bug-free. Um, again, it was just that issue of sometimes you got good timings, other times you got bad timings. 
depending on how you push the first phase. Uh, second intermission on this fight was an ab absolute snooze fest. I think you spent like two, almost three minutes in the second intermission just to get like correct ability combos uh, and correct timings moving into the last phase. And then again, the second intermission had some bugs with it. Um, if you didn't have a Demon Hunter tank who would leap every single tank mechanic in the intermission, you literally just wiped as soon as the last phase started because Grishal would do the the mechanic that like spawns spikes out of the ground during the intermission when you were getting knocked in the corner. So that was a little unfortunate. And then obviously the last phase of this boss for the top end mythic guilds was extremely underwhelming. The first time we got to the last phase with everyone alive, we killed the boss. So it's a very anticlimactic ending to a very long and very difficult encounter. Uh, this is definitely one of those fights that is very front-loaded in difficulty. Um, and then the end is just kind of a breeze as long as, you know, you just get all the soaks. So SLG, probably one of the most underwhelming and hated fights uh, in the entire raid. So the changes they made to it um, is that now you get very set ability orders in phase one and phase two, and also a lot of your um, abilities do reset when you switch phases. So you don't have to like push phase one at a perfect timing within like two seconds to make sure that 10 minutes down the line you get a correct timing, which is kind of nice. And then we move on to Sire Denatrius, the last boss of the raid. Um, by the way, SLG was the most difficult encounter out of the entire raid. It took us over 300 pulls, which partly comes from the difficulty of the, raid, of the boss and partly because we played kind of poorly on it. But then you move on to Sire, which is significantly easier than SLG. Um, but honestly, I was kind of glad about that because after SLG, I just wanted to be done with this raid. <laughs> Uh, but Sire does have the redeeming factor. I believe it is an extremely well-designed fight. Phase 1 is fun, but it's not too difficult. Um, typically, Phase 1s of end bosses are a snooze fest. Like, you make one mistake and you wipe, and, you know, um, when that happens, 200 pulls in, you're like, why are we wiping in Phase 1? Like, we should be seeing the end of this fight. Phase 1 of Sire is easy enough where... Typically, after you're getting into the phase, late phase two, early phase three pulls, you're not going to have wipes in phase one. So phase one of Sire, uh, pretty fun. You just it's just an AOE fiesta, pretty much. Um, the mechanics are not super punishing, and the strategy for it, there's a lot of flexibility with how you deal with stacks. Then you move on to phase two. Again, the phase two strategies i like that there there was some variety limit and echo used completely different phase two strategies because you obviously have the four um the four horsemen that you have to deal with um and limit and echo dealt with them in completely different ways so that was kind of fun to see um just how based on your rate comp and what you have available to you how you approach the second phase also, phase two was a pretty difficult DPS check, not only for each of the little lieutenants that you had to deal with, but also for pushing into phase three at a low enough boss percentage, which is like 40.5, um, to then be able to make that damage check in the last phase. So phase two of this fight um, was pretty fun. The big downside of Sire does come in phase three. So even on Heroic, you get some pretty difficult overlaps with like Hand and Soaks, uh, whereas in Mythic, you don't get the Hand mechanic. Uh, you never get gripped to the boss. This is because half of your raid is in a different realm from the other half, uh, and they can never interact. So that aspect of the last phase I really enjoyed, where both of the realms, like the melee realm and the range realm, are kind of dealing with, me with mechanics simultaneously, but constantly have to do this dance where they avoid each other because um, if you ever like run on top of each other, you just instantly die. So that aspect of the last phase was a lot of fun to deal with. However, 
I believe mechanically the last phase was a little bit too simple. Um, you never really got very difficult overlaps when it came to mechanics. There were two difficult overlaps in the entirety of the last phase, and they were both during the Ravage. So during the first Ravage, um, you get Ravage and Massacre, and you need to drop seeds. And then during the second Ravage, you get Ravage, Massacre, and a knockback from the boss all at the same time. So those two were kind of the difficult overlaps, but everything else besides that was extremely simple in the last phase. Very straightforward, very scripted. Um, so once you got like 15, 20 phase 3 pulls, you were probably killing the boss. And the biggest part of this fight, as far as progression goes, was phase 2 for most of the guilds. Um, but even that being said, overall Sire, I believe, was a pretty good end boss. Uh, it was just slightly let down by the last phase that was, for my liking, or for my taste, a little bit too simple um, as far as mechanics. But that's Castle Natria. Um, especially after they made the changes, hotfixes, um, bug fixes on this, on all the fights that had some issues. Castle Natria, I believe, is probably one of the best intro raids that we've seen in a while. Um, obviously, there's a lot of bosses. Most of them are somewhat challenging early on, but still simplistic enough where if you have enough gear, you'll be able to do them. Uh, whereas when you were doing them with a low amount of gear or lower eye level, you kind of had to deal with some of the more difficult aspects of the fight. Um, and obviously the big sore point of the entire tier, which was SLG, did get fixed um, finally. Um, I believe with SLG, like they should have probably pushed some fixes during the early phases of this fight or the early stages. But overall, I uh, can't complain too much because they did fix the boss and is now a functioning boss before, I believe, less than 100 guilds killed it at the point where they hotfixed it completely. So overall, Castle Natria was a really good raid in my opinion, uh, besides that one little blunder on SLG. What did you guys think of this raid? And if you're progging it now on Mythic, are there any fights that you were looking forward to and maybe after seeing some other guilds do it, you're like, uh, actually, I don't know how I feel about that. Leave your answers in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.